Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us go into the word of God. But before then, let us pray. Prayer is the key. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless you, for you are God that answers prayer. We come before your throne of mercy to say thank you, Lord, for everything that you have been doing for us. We are not unaware of the grace that you have showered upon our lives. It is by your grace we are saved. It is by your grace we are daily protected. It is by your grace we are healed. It is by your grace we live and we breathe. So, Father, as we go into your word, now I ask, Holy Spirit, that you will take control of my vocal cord and take control of the ears of my listeners. Glorify your name, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, my brothers and my sisters, we are going to be teaching the word of God before we go into the prayer for healing. Somebody is going to ask me, how do you just do healing service over the, tele the, the television. Yes, it has happened before, and I know it can happen again. This has happened in many countries by His grace that the Lord has taken me to with prayer. People in many countries, many places far away have testified of how God has used that prayer points and their faith may go together to bring healing to people. I have prayed about this and I have asked the Lord as I come before your people, before the world today, that you will take this word, which the word is God himself, that God you will minister to people, that those who have all varieties and all types of sicknesses, that they will be healed. Your word declared, O oh God, that you've given me the bread of life in both hands, and now I come to share with my people the bread of life. I pray that people will receive, that they may be made whole. I present you now to my people in the name of Jesus Christ. I am going to exhort you from the word of God, Luke chapter 4, from verse 18, which says, Jesus Christ, when he was presented with the scripture, he read thus, and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken-hearted. This is one of the reasons why the Lord Jesus Christ came. And if you go to Psalm 61, it's the same thing that was repeated. In the Old Testament, for the purpose for which Christ will come, was clearly elucidated. It was clearly magnified. It was spoken even before he was born. He said, the Spirit of God Almighty is upon me so that those who are broken hearted will be healed so that those who are in prison will be set loose and in the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 he also said he bore our causes our sin he carried on himself our sicknesses he carried on himself in also in the book of Isaiah 55, say who is going to believe this report? Who is going to believe and have enough faith to know that the coming of Jesus Christ is to bring life to the world? Who is going to believe this report that by praying for you today, by sharing the word of God with you today, that you who is in the hospital, you, who is having some tough times right now, that the blood of Jesus is able to penetrate, no matter the distance, that as you watch this telecast right now, that the power of God will reach you, that the power of God will move from your body, those tumors in your lungs, in your kidney, 
in your liver, in your heart, wherever the sickness may be. Who is going to believe this report right now? That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Who is going to believe that now God is going to do something in your life? That God is going to change your situation? Because we are going to pray for you after this. He said, with his, he, the cross put on him, the shame put on him, the beating, the latches, the stripes, everything that seems to be ugly that was done to the Lord Jesus Christ, even before he went to the cross, even while still on the cross, that is going to bring some deliverance, some salvation, some blessings into your life. Today, my emphasis is that healing the broken heart. Some of you will say, um, is my heart broken? Some of you, without that, you know what you have gone through. Your heart may have been broken. I don't know the cause. I don't know why. But it may be what Father has done to you. It may be what loved ones has done to you. It may be what the society has done to you. To you it may be what marriage has done to you it may be you were unjustly put into the jail it may be because of business failure it may be because of those you really trusted they broke your heart it may be by your own doing your heart has been broken it may be even the people in the church, members, they have broken your heart. It may be even your pastor or your leader, they have done something that caused your heart to be broken. It doesn't matter what it is. We know that there is a God who has come. Jesus Christ came purposely that your heart will be mended. He said, by grace we are saved. That saving in the Greek, translated the Hebrew word, is saving. Is saving. Saving grace. Saving. Saving. That means he did not just save you and you got saved and you got blessed. You now have the assurance of salvation. Saving means is he saving you from a lot of things every day? Is he saving you from the plan of the devil? Is he saving you from failure, from depravity. He's still saving you from things that you cannot even comprehend. We go to sleep every night. We don't know what happens in the night. That saving grace is what is keeping you alive. That saving grace is what is available to heal your diseases. He said, he healed our diseases. He healed my diseases. He healed my broken heart. He heals your broken heart. So today I'm preparing you as we are about to go to prayer. I want you to open your heart. And you will sometimes, some of you will say, well, I'm not in bondage. Yes, you might, you might not know. Some of you are in bondage for drinking, bondage for smoking, bondage for sexual immorality, bondage for alcoholic, bondage for gambling, bondage for what you cannot control yourself. You just can't. You are in bondage with greed. You are in bondage for doing things that brings your integrity down. You cannot maintain your integrity. These are all forms of bondages. You are in bondage to food. You cannot control your appetite. You are in bondage to Courtism. You like to join all those things. You think that they will give you power. You are in bondage when you are kidnapping people. You are in bondage when you are robbing others of what they have that does not belong to you. You are in bondage when you find yourself not able. Even Paul the apostle who was once a terrible ma manager of sin who even witnessed the death of many Christians. As you will read that in the book of Acts chapter 9, even up to 10, how 
he crucified the church, how he persecuted the church. That same man, he cried one day, said, who can deliver me from this bondage? Said, those things that I like to do, I cannot do them. But those things I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. But he's, finally he said, praise be to God, because Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He came that you and I may have life. He said, thanks be to God that he has delivered me. He's given me. My heart was broken from all those terrible things I found myself in. But thanks be to God, he delivered Saul, who became Paul. Today, some of you will say, I'm a Christian. Yes, you may have been a Christian. But you find yourself, see, carrying broken hearted, carrying pains that you cannot even explain to others. I feel the anointing of God now that you will be set loose by the power of God. It's not by my power, Zechariah 4, 6, not by my mind, but by the instruction from the Lord to bring to you the deliverance that you need, that your heart will be healed, mended. Yes, I know he can do it. He's done it before. From the New Old Testament to the New Testament, he kept doing it. Those who are dead physically and spiritually, those who have given up and they have nothing else to look forward to, I bring to you now the solution. Even at this time, it doesn't matter what is going on right now. Some of you may be particular about one sickness or the other. I want you to forget about it. There is nothing too hard with the Lord. He is able. So I want to pray for those right now who can join their faith with mine. I have the faith right now that when I pray by his grace that he will answer our prayer. If there be anybody there out there who has the similar faith, who know that the God that you serve, who promised that lo I am with you always even until the end of the world, that he will heal your broken hearted. No matter what it is, wherever the breakage is in your marriages, in your business, in your family relationship, whatsoever it is, God is able, abundantly able, John 10, 10, to give us life and abundantly. If you are sick, that is no good life. If you have cancer, that is no good life. If you have dry bones, if you have heart problems, diabetics, arthritis, rheumatism, that is not something good. Only the living can praise the Lord. Is there somebody out there who is going to believe with me right now as I take the authority of God to rebuke all those sicknesses? If you do, I want you to believe God. I want you to get yourself ready as I pronounce that the God of heaven, the God who is able to do all things, will heal you. Yes, Lord. Yes, I thank you, Lord. I bless you, Father. I see the light of God shining. I see the power of God emanating right now. Every time I feel this type of anointing, I know God is doing something. This is the type of anointing that happened in Padova one day when one woman said the husband was dying of cancer. And as we prayed, the husband was not dead, but the cancer disappeared, and there was testimony. Another happened, and believe Lord, I thank you for the light of God that has come upon our life right now, that's going to bring healing. I want to pray for those of you who have heart disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command right now that your heart will be made whole. In the name of Jesus, your heart be made whole. Right now, because Jesus said, I have come. His heart was broken, that your heart will be well. I command right now that your heart will be made whole in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for those who have liver problems. Father Lord, I thank you. I thank you because you are the creator of the organs and the system of the body. These ones who are having liver problems, I command that they be made whole in the name of Jesus. I pray for those who are having lungs problem. In the name of Jesus Christ, the lungs have been given to us 
to breathe freely. Because you said in John 9 that out of our belly, from inside of us, shall flow, freely flow, water, living water. I pray that the living water will flow through those areas now. I want to pray for those who are having heart problems by the other scream and scabble syndrome. By the hand of Mosanta, by the guide of the scribbles, my God, I thank you because your healing power is happening right now. Yes, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for healing that man, that woman on the wheelchair right now who is listening. I thank you because by your stripe you said they will be healed. You have done it before. You can do it again. I want to pray for that person, Lord, whose hand cannot move. They are there. They are. They've had strokes. For some time now, they are giving off hope. I thank you, Lord, because you are the God that can give hope. I pray for such a person be healed. I pray for those who are having, whether it's headache, back pain, lung pain, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet will be made whole. I pray for those who are homeless, who have nowhere to stay. Father, Lord God, the blood of Jesus is able to heal. I ask that your blood will come upon my people right now and let your healing power come. Whatsoever is the disease, whether they are named or not, because in the name of Jesus, every kneel, every disease, bow right now as we pray. This is the prayer of unity. Every disease, every misfortune, every bad situation in your home, in your business, in your church, in your ministry, ah, mighty God, no matter. I don't want to really name anything right now, but God knows everything. Whatsoever it is that you are battling with right now, I am praying that you'll be, you'll be, you'll get victory right now in that situation, that you will be made whole. I pray for those who are at home, who are listening, that God will come into your life and change you. I want to pray for all the ministers who have been struggling with their ministry. I pray from this day, the 16th of April 2020, and whatsoever year that you are going to be listening to this uh, telecast, that the God of heaven and earth, the God who created heaven and earth, the God of Shadrach, the God of Meshach, the God of Abednego, the God of Daniel, we step into your situation, we step into your arena, we step into your ministry, into your family. I pray, oh mighty God, for those who are confused in their life, that you will bring knowledge into their life. I pray the power of God will come upon everyone who is listening to this telecast. I want to thank you, brother. If you believe and you had the same faith that I had and you pray, I want you to give us. Let us know and tell us so that we can rejoice and praise God with you because we know when we pray, God answers our prayer. Here at Christ Apostolic Church of God Mission, we are not only ministering to only members of Christ Apostolic Church of God worldwide. We minister to the world. For those who have loved the Lord, those who are loving the Lord, those who desire the Lord, who wants to know the truth and the truth will set them free. We pray for you. And if you need counseling, you need prayer, call us. You have our numbers at the bottom of this screen so that we can pray with you, so that we can counsel you. I know the revival is coming to this country. Revival is coming to this nation. Revival is coming to our state here. And I want you to Tie in, join in, jump into the sea right now because something good is happening to you. You will never be cast away. You will never be disadvantaged. Something good is happening to you. I thank God for hearing this prayer. Blessed be the name of the Lord for the opportunity. Watch my second, my second part of this message another time. Tune in always. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, God.